Hi everybody! Today it is uh, 13th of April, my first Easter vacation day and I planned a nice review with my new Hornbow number 64 and uh, including shooting and uh, wrong movement and now I have a lumbago and I can move but not good and um, I can't shoot properly yet because of my back so uh, this is just not good in the moment but nevertheless um, I can introduce the bow and I will do the shooting later. So, here we have them. It's the horn bow number 64. Um, this is the brother or the sister or sibling of the horn bow number 62. So the boyer is Frank Foss. And um, he is creating every bow on its own. So there is no, the not the same bow as before. He doesn't build it twice. So this bow is a bit different from uh, Hombo 62. The 62 is more recurved here, so uh, 64 is a bit straighter to avoid uh, twisting. And um, his big goal is Turkish fast flight bows. And uh, so he's, he's working on it, yeah? And this is another step. Uh, what do we have here? So this bow, um, is of course made of horn, hickory ash wood here inside, uh, so hickory and ash, I think this is ash. And um, here on the outside we have thin use from the bovine bag and it's covered with um, a skin that is colored, so painted. We have here kangaroo leather wrapping and this is his idea because he knows that I'm working with thumb release. Um, this is some kind of um, pergamon, a thick one, and um, I've already test shot him before I bought it. And this is working very well, so you cannot see any traces. Or I did it right, so this is also possible, but um, I say there are no traces. So um, this pergamon or thick skin is a very good alternative to the ray skin we usually have. And uh, since I do not have it that thick, I have added here one very thin one that I have. This is goat pergamon um, on the other side, because with the bow 62, I found out that I shoot it that way, then the slim bends more than the other one. So the tiller is not good. And then I just turn it and I shoot the other way. So that's the reason why um, this string would not work for this action. But this string is very special. This is a silk string. So the, the first silk string I have, and uh, yeah, these are about 19 single strings for this one string or so. He didn't count it a lot. And uh, the center serving here is then made for this way. Yeah, so where the sign is, that's the bottom, originally. All right, measurements. Um, the bow has a length from here, knock to knock, of 52 inches. Strung, it's about 49. Weight of the bow is 500 gram. Um, arrow pass about 26 millimeters. And um, we have a bending length of about 20 inches. The rest is leather. So this means all this sear section is a lever. And this is really a huge lever because this all this is then yeah leveraging. Huh? <laughs> of course. Okay, so as I said I have already shot him. The nominal strength is not yet known because of the scale topic we have here. When I string this bow with a silk string and I measure directly after half an hour, I measure 42.5 lips. This is really strong. So uh, I have strung this bow yesterday evening and uh, today it was more moderate. Actually, <coughs> we have um, <laughs> in the sun nearly 30 degrees Celsius and 27% humidity. This is still not much. 
and uh, so the nominal strength in the moment could be potentially uh, yeah works 28 inches are here where the rubber band is and I try And um, I think we had estimated 39. So 38 could be then the nominal weight. And uh, but in the end, I measure always when I've strung in that I know the actual current draw weight because this can vary a lot. Now, when the humidity rises, this bow can be much softer. And when humidity is below, it can be even stronger, or if just strong, yeah, freshly strong. So this is what you should mention or take care of if you have a horn bow. Measure this bow at the string. I have taken a draw curve on my rig, and as I said before, there is a scale attached to a fabric there, that is attached to a wind, and so there is a bit of play. Yeah, so there is more movement and this is not precise. The precise draw weight you have with the scale you can attach directly to the string. Then you know it precisely. And even then you can say, okay, there's a, a knock and so on, but this is a bit more precise than the wick. Okay. This is for I don't only have a silk string, like this one, my first silk string, but also a fast flight string. This is a bit longer than, uh, it was about three centimeters longer than the silk string, but the silk uh, gets elongated by the time and um, the fast flight doesn't. So the bray side, difficult to say, it's depending on which string I have on the bow. It's between 6.75 or 6.5, around that. Yeah? So the bracelet is not much. Here um, we have elongated the center serving because then I'm able to turn the bow when the tiller is not right during the shooting session. And if every string is broken, then I have also a dark front string. So three strings come with this bow. This is amazing. So, what else we say? We have um, the weight, limbs, um, shape we have talked about. Um, this is, a, I would say, it's a straight recurve. Uh, with um, here uh, contact in the zia. Um, I think that's correct. Yeah, so the difference to the Hornbow 62 is that 62 is more recurved and this one isn't yeah, to avoid or prevent the bow from twisting. So strongly recurved bows seem to twist easier than the ones who are not that curved. But even that one can twist as well. Especially for Hornbows, you need to take extra care. And for this, Frank has created um, this, um, yeah, this is some kind of uh, correction help. Yeah, this one is here for the lower limb. So you have then this piece, and you see here the screw. This one is here set onto it, as it's quite tight. And then you pull, the, so it needs to be tighter than yet. And then you pull the string into this groove that way. And then you can correct the limb here in this section. I don't do it yet because the bow is straight. Yeah, I don't want to, um, to stress him where it's not needed. The other stringing help you can have, if the tiller is not what you like, like this one is a bit differently bended than this one. You um, take the string like this press it, then you have this help, and 
can just put it in and um, this corrects the shape of the limb. Let it rest for an hour or so and then it goes fine again. But to be honest, this bone needs to be shot. Yeah, he wants to work and I'm very sorry that I cannot let him work today. Yes, he will be very sad. Um, what else do I get with this bow? Um, this was a present. I have six of these arrows. Uh, these arrows have been created by um, Frank Foss. And I come to him a bit closer. Here, this tip, hope you can see it, is um, a nail with horn. And then he tapered it here in the front. So this, um, and uh, right, the knock, something special as well. It's a knock that has been um, yeah, strengthened here with sinew. And I think there are two uh, wood swords, four swords of wood. And uh, Frank shoots Mediterranean style. So if he strings, he has it like this. I, I don't shoot yet. And then he has it and he grabs like this. And exactly like for him, this shape of um, the arrow here is perfect. So if I do it, I have a bit of difficulties placing uh, the knock here on the string. But if I have, then I can just shoot as always. So I can shoot these arrows. Uh, but in the moment I have a target that would destroy them, so I keep them for the moment until I have some kind of hay ball or something there. That would be good. And what else came with this bow? A nice sleeve. And what else? Did we talk about all the materials? Did I mention this is antelope horn? Onyx antelope? No? It is. And uh, here this is buffalo horn. This is buffalo horn. And uh, yeah, this is white paint on um, a skin that is covering the sinews. Right. And that's not all. Because this bow is bright white, um, I could use this quiver that I have created, uh, I think, two years ago. Um, the shape uh, has been taken um, from the quivers that uh, are built by Ramanathan, and uh, he allowed me to rebuild my own version. And uh, yeah, that's the one for the back. But since my back, yeah, usually I, I don't have it that often. Beautiful, but um, when I had then um, the frozen shoulder, I didn't draw it that way. And uh, this is a good solution if you are fine with the shoulders, fine with the back, and maybe on the horse also. This is okay. And uh, for the hips, I have me created um, a mini quiver, Turkish style. So it's a pocket quiver. Yeah, or mini quiver. As you can see, six arrows can be pulled easily, held easily. There are also room for more. Like here. So eight arrows, no problem. And I have also here a pouch in the front. Like it's done for the Turkish quivers. So the only difference is that I do not need a three-point fixing. It's only a two-point fixing. We still have, design-wise, this uh, large dot here and above. But uh, I found out that it doesn't make any sense at this size. Now, so here we only have the small one. We have here the traditional way of getting this loop to the quiver and it's yeah, just 
easy. Now the, oh, the arrows uh, hold it like that. Yeah, so you have it then on the right length, yeah, like this. Ready to go, yeah. And uh, can if you want more to the back or front, you can just adjust it with the belt. Easy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Then maybe after. Yeah, you can see it's already half a bit. And uh, yeah, taking again the weight, draw weight. Yeah, thirty nine point six two. So it's uh, depending how much um, I pull. So it's around thirty nine, thirty eight. Yeah, it's a little bit depending. All right, that's the introduction round for today and I hope that I can do the shooting soon. Hi, hi, back again. 10 days pausing because of the back injury and uh, now I'm back in the garden with bow number 64. Strung with a silk string and um, yeah, show you um, first the fitting of the handle you can see here there's a small bump and the broad surface here is leaning then against the hand like this so this comes quite naturally yeah. okay and strength yes it has um, we guess it's about uh, 39 because it's depending on the environment, how strong the bow is. Um, if the humidity is very high, it will be lower. And if the humidity is very dry, it will be higher. Currently, we have about 19 uh, degrees Celsius and 35% uh, humidity, which is still dry. Okay, scale is ready. Forty one. Another try. Forty. So around forty pounds at twenty eight inches, which is quite strong for me. And uh, the maximum for me in the moment that I'm capable of shooting a few times more than once. Yeah? Okay, now let's shoot. Right, as always, short distance, approximately seven meters. So the safe distance. draw it's amazing so really it doesn't feel that it's just it builds up very smoothly very nice shoot a bit to the left in the moment and um, the arrows have a weight of 472 grain so it, uh, the weight is fine it should be around 10.3 grain per pound Still to the left, maybe. So, and the fourth one. Still a bit to the left. <laughs> Around eight meters. Ah, this was off. One. 
great, so I show you. But it's off the target. So first one was the one in the neck, uh, the second in the center, um, third one was uh, way to the left, and the other one that is just crossing the first one is the fourth one. Approximately 10 meters. So the sound, and Frank already told me, the silk spring is very silent, very nice. There is no bam, it's just pop. Very cool, I like it. Yeah! Yeah! Show you! <laughs> now, yeah, not really in the center. One is in the center and the other are quite close. <laughs> It was uh, hitting the 3D target, but not the center. <laughs> that was more or less hitting the first one, the first arrow. And now it's quite difficult. I need to get between the two to hit the center. Ah, way off. <laughs> Show you. <laughs> See, the first was um, the one in the target on the right, the second on the left, and the third was off. The bow feels very soft, so it's a strong bow for me, yeah. But uh, the draw is very nice, and you don't want to stop shooting, although it's getting really heavy for me. Um, after this uh, round, I will exchange the string so that we can test the fast flight. No. Sorry. Yes! Seagull hit. Yes! Right into the ring. <laughs> I'll show you. See? First was slightly above the target, uh, in the center target. Um, the third was in the ring. So I quickly wanted to uh, double check the gray side again. So after a bit shooting, um, the upper limb that bends more is a bit deformed. Yeah, so not the same as the lower limb, but this is normal for hornbow. Yeah, so this is no issue. That is, it is, it is like it is. Yeah, and uh, this is the reason why I just would like to turn the bow now, so that this is then the upper limb and will get bent more. Nevertheless, um, brace height approximately is it like this. Um, 6.25 or uh, six and a quarter inches and um, this is with the silk string so you will see that um, what the silk string has elongated already a bit when I uh, measure it um, straight after stringing um, we have about six and a half yeah so this goes down or even 6.75 so the string gets longer this is typical for silk, yeah? So we have natural materials here, they work. 
more than you think. And um, if I get on the fast ride, you see a difference. Nevertheless, I would like to take the opportunity to show you um, the comparison of these two bows compared with the silk string. Yeah, you see that uh, we have different shades here. Maybe like this. Yeah. Completely different shapes. Not only just uh, forget the tiller yeah, for the moment. Maybe this way shows similar. You see, um, we have different lengths, but most eye striking is the difference in the Zia section. Yeah, the Zias uh, with 64 are shorter and more straight and less bent. Okay, stringing the bow is uh, easy and um, you can see here these grooves. So this is for the string and this is for the stringing help. Um, Frank uh, likes to reuse um, an outdated string so that he cannot use anymore. There's just a knot in the middle and then you have already the um, loops for the stringing help. Yeah, this is quite nice and uh, this is what you can do with, a, with an outdated string. And um, I have also um, this, yeah, it's a polyester string, I, I think, and um, yeah, quite nice too. And I think the color matches quite nicely here. Uh, okay, so here is my fast light string. Put it on. So one side can already be put here on. And then the loop. So. Right. And now I need to make sure that the string, that the stringing help has about this angle so that I get along here with the loop. And I try to do this as symmetrical as possible. Okay. And I slide uh, with the bow along, with, uh, along the legs. To avoid twisting. Yeah. So checking. You see, string is fitting nicely here. The side too. And straight as well. Very good. Tiller looks fine too. Okay, so usually if you uh, string the horn bow the first time, um, you should uh, instantly correct what is wrong. So let's say the bow um, tiller is not okay, then you have uh, the small loop that you can um, put on, or if um, it's just out of uh, the one side, there is this. Uh, correction help yeah, that is then put on the bow and then the string is um, put on the side so that you that the limb gets a bit bent into the other direction and then the bow is relatively straight again and uh, this is not a one-time action you need to take care and maintain your bow always yeah, it's not only once always so for some people this is a bit of a hassle and they don't like it, um, but I think it's very charming. And um, yeah, all bows, uh, horn bows are a bit different, yeah? so there is not one exactly like the other. And um, they have a bit of personality. Yeah, the other bows have it as well, but these are even stronger in their personality. Alright, now, as you can see here, this is the upper limb that is a bit more bending here. I shoot now the bow this way. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, with arrows best way. Right. Short distance again. Feels much stronger. We check. Okay. First of all, the measurement arrow and the scale. It feels stronger, but it isn't. It's around the same, so still 40. 39.94. Don't see an effect. Yes, <laughs> that was a hit. Um, but the sound is as well very silent, and I think not only the silences do it, as well the way the loops are treated. So here is leather wrapped around. And um, I think this helps damping the sound as well. Very nice. <laughs> it looks like um, the seagull is eating the arrow. <laughs> So second uh, was the hit in the leg. I wanted to double check the tiller, uh, the brace side. And in this we have a brace side of six. Yeah, so um, the fast flight string is uh, well, three centimeters longer than the silk string. And even after the silk string has uh, elongated, there is still uh, a difference in length. Yeah, so I have uh, now three strings that I can test and uh, yeah, find out which uh, string length uh, I like the most. Okay, so for the time being I think the bow likes the silk string more because you can see um, the, the tiller difference here. And if you see it like this, there's a way you can fix it. Make sure that the string cannot get off, and then you bend it this way, and then it's better. Okay, I'll show it the right way, upside up. the target not in the center yeah first in the center second uh, on the belly and third is in the upper leg so usually if you have just strung um, your horn bow you shouldn't shoot but this bow has been strung before and was just a minute unstrung and uh, so it's no problem. Yeah, if you just change the string, you do not need to wait. But if you have uh, let him rest for days or so, and then you string him the first time, then it should wait at least 30 minutes. And if the bow is very strong, you can even wait for a few hours until you shoot it. Okay. Now, uh, downside up. And uh, that was the moment if you think mm, it's not right, then don't do it. In this case, the bow was not exactly here, but it was just um, this edge that was on my hand. It was not the full contact. If something's not 100% like it should be, don't you? It's wasted. But 
even if everything's fine, you can miss it anyway. <laughs> Up, uh, downside up. That was a center hit. A nice one. But just a bit, really center. As far as I could see through here. No, that was not a hit. center show you huh that's okay the bowman has once uh, said to charlie greenberg um, if you want to improve your um, accuracy stop when you have the best hit well that was the best hit of today so i shall stop shooting for to now for today um, as you can see, I've uh, shot the bow two times with the downside up and it also already begins to bend more. Yeah, so this is something you can train with a horn bow. And uh, for this, you need a string that has a longer center serving. Yeah, so or you can just split it, but no one who creates a center serving would do it because then they go all the way up. This is um, not so nice uh, for the string, but it's good for the bending. So make your choice. Um, I want to show you the comparison between um, the now fast five string bow and the horn bow number 62. See again. Very similar but not totally. Yeah, you can see here um, still the different shapes and you see this yeah the brace height of bow number 64 is a little less than uh, for 62. Maybe I shoot this way. No, no. I try to get it but it's difficult. I could measure it, but that would be too simple. Um, so brace height here for 62 is obviously more than for 64. Um, reason me. Um, what a charming bow. It's not only a beautiful black and white bow, uh, the, the draw is so smooth. Yeah, the first time shooting it today, it made obvious that the silk string and the horn bow together as a couple are just wonderful to shoot, even if the bow is very heavy and uh, it's a bit exhausting for me in the moment. The drawing was just wow. Yeah, I didn't want to stop shooting the silk string on this bow, so this is really cool. So whenever you have the opportunity to, um, to try silk string, do it. You need to be careful with the string. Um, these separate strings should not twist or get detangled or something. And um, if a few of them get loose or just out of order, then the string is not usable anymore. Um, but this is not much of a difference to a, a common string. Yeah, so the same with this one, but this fast flight string is 16 strings and um, if I'm not mistaken in the other one, uh, way more, roughly estimated 90. Yeah, so because these are very fine, um, um, yeah, strings. <laughs> okay, what else? Sound, very nice. Yeah, it, it's just you even don't notice it. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if silences are needed here, but they look nice. And I'm already a fan of silences, so I like them. If they are necessary or not, they are just looking cute. And uh, what else? Wow. So Frank puts 
always a lot of love and affection into his um, bowls and they're very soft very very smooth and um, it's just yeah, there is no, nothing rough everything is rounded nothing edgy not even the edges are edgy yeah they, they don't hurt and um, what else to say yeah for him every bowl is a unique project he doesn't do it twice as i said before so that's the reason why they are all different if you have already a bow from frank foss and you think hmm, should i have another one yeah why not yeah it will be different and uh, what else to say um, this solution is specially made for me and the others get these cute um, arrow rests yeah with a bit of fur on it looks just cute um, but for me it's it's not working that way and you can see here the feathers have been uh, sliding along here and um, the piece of skin is still in best condition same with my very thin one yeah you see here the feathers have uh, left a trace and uh, what else so pleasure to shoot it's silent um, the fast ride string feels stronger because it's not that it doesn't bend that easily or doesn't stretch that easily as silk and i think this is what i felt just in the very beginning was just ha oh, 40 pound no problem <laughs> if i do it a few times um my left hand gets a bit shaky so uh, there is where the power is then going down but for the draw no problem and um, the topic uh, regarding a tiller correction also this is typical for hornbows yeah you always have it and i'm very happy that um, frank has created me this string uh, this helpers um, to correct the bow because then i can instantly just when i see it correct the tiny bit this is much better as if you wait until the bow is totally twisted and this can be corrected but it's a lot of hassle and should be done by a pro yeah don't do it yourself without him or her looking over your shoulder and correct you when you do something wrong so uh, correcting a horn bow is something you should be trained to yeah so if you buy a horn bow and you have no clue um, please ask the bowyer for a training, a short introduction, what to do and what to avoid. And um, yeah, if you do what you have been told, you'll be very happy with your hornbow. Okay, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you very much, Frank, for building this very beautiful bow for me. And as you know, I will take care of him as much as for the 62 and all the others. And uh, thanks everybody for watching and for the patience. And um, yeah, wish you a nice weekend and um, fingers crossed for our friends in Ukraine. Thank you. Bye bye.